rolling. Hello everybody. It's William and it's October 31st. It's Halloween night. All the little Halloweeners are out running around uh, doing their trick-or-treat thing. But anyway, here it's a big night here. This is where we're going to light up the Glenwood for the season. So after we get it lit, we're going to party like it's 1899. So sort of dress for the occasion. Let me take my hat and coat off and we'll get the stove fired up. All right, now this year, normally how I start the fire is I collect, you know, typical wood shavings, kindling wood, paper, cardboard, whatever to start the fire. However, this year, in order to preserve my glass and keep it nice and clean, uh, some of my cohorts on the coal forum, the NEPA Crossroads.com, suggested I try charcoal. So I went out to the local Walmart today and bought the last couple of bags of charcoal. And I can't believe it, the Christmas stuff is out already. It's not even Halloween. But anyway, what we've done here, let me grab the flashlight. <clears throat> is I've put some of this in here. You can see it's that chunk charcoal. It's not briquettes. It's the natural chunk charcoal. That's what was recommended that I use. And we're going to start it this way. What I'm going to do... Uh, we're doing this together for the first time. I've never done this before, so we'll see how well it works. So what I'm going to do here, and the other goal is to keep my sleeves clean and start the fire. Try to get soot in my sleeves. So I'm going to put around the charcoal I'm going to put a circle of, of coal. This is nut size. Normally I use stove size. There's a few pieces of stove that's in. But the parlor stove upstairs takes this size. I have yet to order my stove coal for this. So, but this burns not just fine. And we'll see how this works. So put a little circle of coal around the charcoal. see how that works. Now, make sure my dampers are open, the pipe damper is open, the base burner is in direct draft. We'll open the primary dampers all the way and uh, I guess the Glenwood gets to start off the party because she gets a double shot of kerosene two shots of kerosene to start off her her heating season here so you pour this slowly on the charcoal if you pour it too fast it just runs off but you want to pour it slow enough that the uh, kerosene or whatever lighter fluid or whatever soaks into the charcoal so it'll ignite there we go that's all there is to that now we will remove the jug of kerosene away from the uh, fire here. And let me grab my matches. Whoops. Now we'll see how that goes. Give it a little secondary air. And off we go. Now we'll see how well this works. Let's see how much time we've got here. I've got a couple minutes. So what I wanted to do while this is starting up, yeah it's drawing just fine. What I wanted to talk to you about is something I forgot to tell you about the other day when I was going over the features. I was so busy trying to um, go over all the details, I forgot the main aspect of the design of the stove, and that's the overall shape of it. As you notice, it's tall and round. 
versus uh, short and square like uh, today's cold stoves. So the reason this is done this way, if you've ever read about how combustion works on various fuels, you have basically three components. You have carbon, you have hydrocarbons, that's what you see burning right, that's hydrocarbons, that's the gaseous part of the fuel. And then you have inert matter which comes out as leftovers ash after the carbon and the hydrocarbons are burned. Anthracite coal is mostly carbon, over 80%. But however, it still has a lot of volatile gases in it, hydrocarbons. And the stove is shaped this way for the ideal combustion of coal. The firebox is conical, as you can see, you know, it's shaped, it's deep, and it's narrow. Coal, in order to burn properly, has to be compacted together because in order for it to maintain combustion, you have to have a certain temperature. And the coal pieces bunched together helps maintain the temperature above the ignition level of the coal. Coal uh, ignites at a pretty high temperature. The hydrocarbons in coal ignite at around, mm, I think, 1200, 1500 degrees. They burn off the carbon monoxide. And at 1800, they burn off the uh, water and, car and uh, carbon dioxide. However, in a naturally aspirated stove, natural draft, the best you're going to get is burn, you know, uh, to carbon monoxide. You have to have a forced draft to get that kind of combustion to, to uh, burn it to um, hydrocarbons. So anyway, the second thing here is this big part here. You wonder, well, why do they have all this space over the fire pot? The top of the fire pot is right here. The second ingredient to good combustion is an adequate supply of air. And air has to be admitted in the right proportion and at the right temperature for perfect combustion to occur. These stoves allow enough space over the fire for the gases and the air to mix in the proportion necessary to get proper combustion. The old formula is, is that the combustion chamber needs to be more than twice the height that the firebox is deep or wide. And this is almost exactly, it's a little bit higher, twice the height of the depth of the firebox. So the mass of fuel, according to the old formula, has to have this much space over it for adequate combustion. And um, that's our little lesson on combustion right now. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to let this go and we're going to pause the video and come back in a few minutes and we'll see how well the coal's ignited. So we're going to see how this works at the same time. Anyway, we'll see you in a little bit and uh, look forward to seeing you then.